So this is a video lesson on 10.1 tangent lines. Uh, we're going to talk about some properties of circles in this unit, in this lesson, as well as uh, tangents and how they relate to circles. So the first thing we need to make sure we understand is that in chapter 10, we're going to specifically be talking about circles, and we have to first identify the definition of a circle. So the first thing we need to recognize is a circle is a set of all points. set of all points in a plane on a two-dimensional surface that are equal distant that are equal distant from a given point and that given point is called the center of the circle so here in my diagram I have a circle and this is point C which would be the center and all of the points on the edge of the circle are all equal distant, meaning that every time I draw a segment from the center to that point on the circle, all these lines have to have the same length or the same measure. So uh, when we're talking about naming a circle, like when triangles we use the vertices and we did triangle ABC. If you remember back from previous lessons, that's how we named a triangle. To name a circle, we use this circle notation, which is a circle with a dot in the middle, and then we label it by the letter that represents the center of the circle. So here in the diagram to the right would be circle C, and that's how we would name it. Here's some other terminology or vocabulary that may be important to, to memorize and to know about circles. The first is called the radius. A radius is a segment whose endpoints are are the center, one end point is at the center of the circle, and the other end point is on the circle. So if I had to draw a quick diagram, I would draw a segment with an end point here at the center and an end point on the circle, and that would be an example of a radius. In the diagram above, we have two options um, for names of radii. One is AC, the other is CB. And remember, the order of those end points is not specific. It can be AC or CA, and it could be CB or BC. Okay. Uh, our second is called a chord. A chord is a segment whose endpoints endpoints are on the circle. So that means both endpoints have to fall somewhere on the circle. Here's one point, and here's another point, and therefore that's a chord. So again, when I look at my picture, the best way to represent that would be a. G, the letters A, G, or G, A, with the segment notation above it. Also, uh, it's important to remember that the diameter is also a chord, but the chord that specifically represents the diameter has to contain a point on that segment, which is the center of the circle. So again, when I look at my diagram here, um, the center C is right here, and the only chord that passes through the center is chord AB. So again, in my diagram, I'm going to make sure that I specify that AB is a chord, but it's also, so AB is a chord, but it's also the diameter. All diameters are chords, but not all chords are diameters. You also have secant, tangent, and point of tangency lines. These are different than chords um, and diameters and radii because they they are lines or rays that can go past through a circle and continue in one or both directions. So a secant is a line that intersects the circle at two points, but because it's a line, it's going to continue in both directions forever. So here when I draw a diagram of that, I might have a chord that like looks like this, but a secant is a line that goes on forever through those two points on the circle. This would represent a secant because it's got the arrows in the end. In my picture above, that would be best represented by the letters A and G with the line notation above it. Uh, tangent would be also a line, but that line intersects a circle only at one point, and exactly one point at that at exactly one point. 
So again, notationally, I'm going to have to have one point of intersection with the circle, and then the line, the only way I can draw it is to pass kind of like this. So when I look at the diagram above, the only line that represents a tangent line would be the line DB or DE. Same name, different name for the same line. DB would be a tangent line, or you could also call that same line DE. Last thing is to understand that the point where a tangent line intersects a circle is called a point of tangency. So it is a point, point of tangency is a point where the tangent line intersects the circle. So again, I'm specifically looking at a point, for example, like that, where my tangent line would pass through. I'm not really worried about the tangent line, but I'm more worried about the point. So on my diagram above, that point would be best represented by the letter B as my point of tangency. So go ahead and take a few moments here and kind of draw out common tangent lines, external and uh, internal. Take your best guess um, before we move forward in the video and see if you can draw tangent lines. Now remember, a tangent line is a line that intersects a circle exactly once. So common tangents intersect both circles at one point each. So hopefully you've attempted uh, one through five at the best of your ability. Let me kind of walk through here with you and kind of understand what common tangents are. If I had to draw a line that intersected each of these circles only at one point, there are four common tangents that I can draw. The first two are called external tangents because that line right there is a line that is on the exterior of the circles and it also intersects each circle at one point each. The line also underneath the two circles would represent a common tangent that is also external. So if you had to understand your external terminology, an external tangent is a tangent on the outside of the circles. Internal tangents would be lines that I can draw that would pass through the inside of the circle. So here I have a common tangent with that point and that point. And then also, to finish the x, I kind of have a point that looks like this as well. So there I have two internal tangents because the tangents are on the inside of the circles. So those are my four common tangents for two circles that do not intersect at all. What happens if one circle is completely inside the other? When I try to draw a common tangent to one, unfortunately, I get a secant on the other. And that's a problem because I need common tangents to intersect both circles only at one point each. So in this type of case, there are no common tangents. There are none. No common tangents when two circles are concentric or one is completely inside the other. Let's look at three, four, and five now. Here it looks like I have two circles, one inside the other. However, they do have a point of um, one point of um, one point in common. So the, that point in common then is going to be my common tangent, tangency point, and therefore this has one common tangent. Here, where the two circles intersect at one point, I'm going to have two external common tangents, and I'm going to have one internal common tangent which is going to be perpendicular to the external, especially when the circles are congruent to each other. Here we have intersecting circles with two common tangents, and those two would both be external tangents, and they would look like that. Remember, these types of uh, problems with common tangencies, you're going to have to be able to either draw the picture or also draw the common tangents. Let's look at the next page. In 10.1, we have some theorems that are also uh, true and appear a lot in uh, our unit on circles. The first is if in a plane, if in a plane I have a line that is tangent to a circle. I have a line that's tangent to a circle. If and only if the line, which we know is tangent, is perpendicular. to the radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. So I have QP, which is a radius. It's a segment, which endpoints are at the center and on the circle. 
and point P at the point of tangency of the line M, which is perpendicular to the radius. So in that case, is the line M tangent to circle Q? Why or why not? That would be yes, this is your reasoning, because QP, the radius, QP, is perpendicular, that's upside down, capital T is the represent, symbol representing perpendicular, to line M, to line M. To line M. So because of that theorem, there's a key concept that kind of gets tied along with that in the fact that if AB is tangent, and I know that AB and AC are perpendicular to each other. So I know AB is a tangent, and I know it's perpendicular to the radius. Perpendicular. If that's true, then we can also identify that this triangle that's drawn between the letters A, B, and C is a right triangle. a right triangle because I have angle A here, which is a right angle. So if that's true, then the silex must fit the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the hypotenuse squared has to be equal to the leg squared plus the leg squared. Because, of perpen because it's perpendicular, I can use the fact that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the leg squared plus the leg squared. So let's go ahead and practice that idea. We can work that concept forward and back because of the biconditional statement. So BC is a radius of circle C. And determine whether BAB is tangent to the circle C. So they give me that this is the radius. They also tell me the length of CA is 7 and the length of BA is 6. We need to determine if AB is tangent. We don't know if it's tangent. We're trying to prove it. So to prove that it's tangent, we need to first work backwards with our theorem, our key concept above. If the Pythagorean theorem is true, therefore, AB must be a tangent. So if the Pythagorean is true, that would make a CB perpendicular to AB. Therefore, AB would have to be a tangent line. So let's plug in our Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse squared is going to be equal to the leg squared plus the leg squared. And if this equation is true, then I know I am a, AB would be a tangent of circle C. 7 squared is 49. 3 squared is 9 plus 6 squared, which is 36. And 36 plus, um, 36 plus 9 is 45. Well, unfortunately, 45 is not equal to 49. So that's false. And because that's false, then we know that AB is not tangent to circle C. AB is not tangent to circle C. So we also have this other theorem in 10.1, which talks about when I have two tangents that are both common exterior, have a common exterior point. Common exterior point. So here I have two tangents to circle P, going through R, point of tangency R, and point of tangency T. They both have a common exterior point, which we can call S. The theorem states if those two common tangents have external point, their lengths of the tangents must be congruent to each other. Must be congruent to each other. So if SR and ST are tangents, are tangent segments, and they share point S, that means that SR would have to be congruent to ST. So with some practice problems here, I'm going to go through a couple, and I'm going to have you try a couple on your own as well. Uh, example two should be pretty easy to set up here. I have two common tangents with an exterior point of R, so that means they're congruent. So 28 should be equal to 3x plus 4. When I subtract 4 and divide by 3, I get x to be equal to 8. Number three is a little more challenging because they're asking me to find the perimeter of the polygon. So I'm actually going to try to find the distances or the lengths around the exterior of this polygon. So I want to find these all these lengths and try to find the distance it totals. Because all of these are tangent lines, they all have points of tangency. And therefore, the common tangents that intersect an, an external point 
which would be the vertices of my the vertices of my polygon, they have to be congruent to each other. Meaning that if this is 13, this segment would also be 13 because they are common tangents. Well, if that's 13 and the whole thing's 25, I can subtract 25 from 13 to get this common tangent of 12, which makes that congruent to this common tangent of 12. And when I take away 21, if I take away 12 from 21.8, I end up with, for this segment, 9.8, which is a common tangent to this point. So this would also be 9.8. The only other piece I'm missing here is this 4.6, which would be a common tangent to this 4.6. So when I go ahead and add up 13, 13, 12, 12, 9.8, 9.8, 4.6, and 4.6, when I add up those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers, their sum is going to be the perimeter of the polygon, which is going to add up to 78.8. Uh, I really want to go over number four because that's a very uh, interesting question and it's a little bit different. It's a great SOL question that I'd love to uh, go over. I'm going to leave example five for you to try on your own and check with the completed notes key. Example number four <coughs> says that ST is a tangent to circle C, so I know that this has to be a tangent line. And if it's intersecting the radius of the circle, that means that those two segments are perpendicular to each other. They're asking me to find the length of or find the value of R. Since this is the radius of the circle, any, cool, any segment that goes from the center to the edge of the circle is also going to have that same length. So those are both R. When I look at this right triangle that's formed, ST would represent a leg of my right triangle, R would represent the other leg of my right triangle, and Q to T would represent the entire hypotenuse. So as I set up my Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse squared should be equal to the leg squared plus the leg squared. All I need to do now is plug in what I know for the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse would be 18 plus the length of the radius. So that would be r plus 18. Each leg would represent either r or 24. So r would be one leg and 24 would be my other leg. I'm just going to have to square those quantities and add the legs together after squaring them. So don't freak out too much. 24 squared we can find pretty quickly. Um, 24 squared is going to be, in my calculator, I can find that to be 576. R squared is just going to be R squared. And remember, when we're given a binomial, we're asked to square that binomial, we need to multiply that term to itself. That's what squaring means. So I need to remember how to multiply two binomials. And we're going to do that by the word FOIL. The first term in the first polynomial times the first term in the second polynomial. R times R is R squared. First O means outside, so first of the first one times the 18 of the second one, so that would be plus an 18R. Then inside, I means inside, so 18 times R would be 18R. And then finally the L represents the last two terms, so that would be 18 times 18. When I multiply 18 times 18, I get 324. Remember, anytime during a video, you can always pause it, try problems on your own, and simplify them, and then follow along afterwards. So just as a quick recap, the red line here means first, the orange line means O, outside, the green line means inside, and the blue line means last, FOIL. Now I'm going to go ahead and just plug those values into my equation here at the top. So r squared plus 18r plus 18r, combine those like terms. 18 plus 18 is going to give me 36r plus 324. So now I'm just going to combine like terms on opposite sides. I'm going to subtract an r squared from both sides, which means they'll cancel completely. I'm probably going to subtract 324 to both sides. 
to combine those like terms. So 576 minus 324 is 252. And that's going to be equal to 36R. After I divide by 36, 252 divided by 36 is 7, meaning the radius is 7. And that's what they're asking me to find, so I'm done right there. <coughs> Go ahead and try example 5, and then check it with the completed notes key to see how you did. Actually, it's come to my attention that this answer, this question is not on the answer key, so I'm going to go through it really quickly with you. Um, again, just setting up the Pythagorean theorem, because I know it's a tangent to circle C. I know that leg squared plus leg squared is going to equal hypotenuse squared. The one thing I have to remember to do is make sure I nine, add the radius 9 to the outside piece of that line segment CE uh, 32. So 9 plus 32 is 41. Nine squared is eighty-one, where forty squared is sixteen hundred. Forty-one squared is going to give me one thousand six hundred eighty-one, which is equal to one thousand six hundred eighty-one when I add the leg squared. Since these two numbers are equivalent to each other, the question is DE a tangent of circle C can be explained as yes, yes, because I know that CD is perpendicular to DE.